It's been a while since we have ventured into shaders, so today I've got something beyond the usual sliders and menus, a 3D tunnel animation. While searching for new ideas, I stumbled upon this incredible shader on Shader Toy and that sparked the concept for today's build, a 3D interactive page. Let me show you two versions. In the first version, I used the original shader with 3JS to create a striking landing page. Not only that, I added a smooth scroll effect as well, so as you scroll, the tunnel animates, giving it this dynamic 3D effect. In the second version, which we are going to cover in this video, I created this 3D content slider that syncs perfectly with the tunnel, which resulted in a seamless 3D style layout that looks super sleek. To achieve this, we'll use a combination of GSAP, scroll trigger and 3JS. And don't worry, I'll be sharing the source code for both the versions so you can use them however you like, whether for a landing page or an interactive image slider. If you want to access the source code, check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Creating this animation took quite a bit of time to put together, so if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate a like. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's kick things off with the HTML. First, we'll add a simple navbar and footer to structure the page. The navbar will be divided into three columns, two on the sides for the navigation links and the logo placed right in the center. For now, I'll adding a few placeholder links to each of them. As for the footer, we'll keep it minimal with two paragraph elements. Next, we'll add a container that will hold our slider. Inside this container, we'll also include an overlay div which will be used later to enhance the visual depth of the tunnel effect. At this stage, the slider will be left empty because we'll be generating the slides dynamically using JavaScript. Now that the structure is in place, let's move on to the styling. First. We'll reset all margins and padding to ensure consistent spacing across different browsers and set box sizing to border box. For the body, we'll set the width and height to 100% and give it a solid black background to match the overall dark theme. We'll also hide any horizontal overflow to prevent unwanted scrolling. Next, the canvas element will be fixed at the top left of the viewport and pushed behind other elements using a negative Z index. This is where our tunnel will be rendered later. For images, I'm setting them to cover their containers completely using object fit cover, ensuring the maintain aspect ratio. Moving on to links and paragraph elements, they'll be styled with a monospaced font, uppercase letters, and a clean white color for high contrast against the dark background. Now for the navbar and footer, they are both fixed, spanning the entire width of the screen with padding to give them some breathing room. We'll space out the nav items using justify content space between and apply mix blend mode exclusion to create a cool blending effect with the background. The logo itself will be larger and styled with a light font to make it stand out. Next, let's define the container class which will hold our slider. We are setting it to a height of 2000 viewport height to create enough vertical space for smooth scrolling. The slider will be fixed, taking up the full width and height of the viewport with transform style preserve 3D and perspective set to 500 pixels to ensure our 3D effects render correctly. Each slide will be absolutely positioned and will animate using will change properties for optimized performance. We'll also apply a subtle blur and transparency effect to the images inside the slider using the slide image class giving it that futuristic look. Lastly, we'll add an overlay to enhance the depth effect. 
This overlay will use a radial gradient to create a soft transition from transparent to black making the tunnel center pop more. At the end, we'll be adding a smooth scrolling effect and for that, I'll be including some CSS directly from Lanis documentation to make the page flow seamlessly with our animation. Before we dive into the JavaScript, I want to quickly go over the data we'll be working with. I've created a file called data.js which holds a simple array of objects. Each object represents a slide and contains just two properties, a title and a dummy ID. It's a basic structure, but it's all we need to dynamically generate the content for each card in our slider. Just a heads up, this array will come into play when we start generating the slides. Now, before we dive into the code, let me break down how we are going to build this in three main steps. Render the 3D tunnel using shaders and 3JS, generate the slides dynamically using JavaScript, and finally animate the tunnel and the slides with GSAP and scroll trigger. We'll start by rendering the tunnel itself which is going to use some WebGL magic behind the scenes. For those who aren't familiar, shaders are small programs that run directly on your GPU. In this case, they are responsible for creating the cool visual effects we'll be applying to our tunnel. There are two types of shaders we'll be working with, vertex shaders and fragment shaders. The vertex shader handles the geometry or shape of the object, while the fragment shader deals with coloring each pixel, which is where the spatial effects happen. Now let's walk through the code. In our HTML file, we have got two script tags. The first one is for the vertex shader. I originally found only fragment shader on shader toy, but I ran into some issues, so I used a little help from ChatGPT to make it work properly by adding a vertex shader. The vertex shader is pretty straightforward. It simply sets the position of each vertex in the scene, allowing the 3D tunnel to render properly. The second script is for the fragment shader, which is the one doing most of the heavy lifting. This shader creates the tunnel-like effect by using a combination of sine waves and trigonometry to manipulate the colors and patterns. It also uses a couple of variables, time which controls the animation over time and scroll offset which will sync the tunnel animation with the user scroll later on. Now that we know what shaders are and how they work, let's actually render our 3D tunnel. First, we import our data from data file, we'll get to that later when we build the slides. Next, we are using a library called Lanis to handle smooth scrolling and we integrate that with GSAP and scroll trigger to update the scroll animations as we move through the page. You can find this block of code on their documentation. We have already used this in many of our recent videos so let me tell you in short that it applies a smooth scrolling effect on our page. Now we'll be using 3JS to handle the 3D scene and apply our shaders to create that tunnel effect. First, we create a scene using 3JS. A scene is essentially the space where all the 3D objects like our tunnel will live. Then we add a camera. We are using an orthographic camera here which gives us a flat 2D like perspective. Unlike a regular 3D camera, an orthographic camera doesn't create any depth distortion making it perfect for rendering our tunnel in this case. After that, we set up the renderer. The renderer is what actually draws everything on the screen. We tell it to take up the entire window size so our animation will be full screen. Now for the tunnel itself, we create a plane geometry that covers the entire viewport. This plane is essentially a flat rectangle where we'll apply our shader effects. To make the animation work, we pass in some uniforms. These are variables that the shader will use like time for the animation timing, resolution for the screen size and scroll offset for syncing the scroll with the tunnel's movement later on. Then we create a shader material using both the vertex and fragment shaders we discussed earlier. This material is applied to the plane which creates the actual tunnel effect on the screen. We also add the plane as a mesh into the scene. A mesh is simply the geometry plus the material, so in our case it's the plane with the tunnel shader applied. Finally, we have the animation loop. This is where the tunnel comes to life. 
we calculate the time difference between frames, update the time value in the shader and then use the renderer to redraw the scene for each frame. This creates the smooth continuous movement of the tunnel. We also make sure the tunnel adjusts when the browser window is resized by updating the screen size in our uniforms. And that's it, our 3D tunnel is now rendered on the page. Now that we have got the 3D tunnel rendered, it's time to move on the second step, generating the slides dynamically. We are using GSAP and scroll trigger to animate the slides as they move through the 3D tunnel. So first, we register scroll trigger with GSAP which will allow us to sync the animation with the user scroll later on. We are working with 10 slides in total. To do that, we have set a couple of variables, Z step, which is the distance between each slide along the Z axis, in this case 2500 pixels and initial Z which is the starting position of the first slide deep inside the tunnel. Now let's walk through how we generate the slides. We start by selecting the slider container from our HTML and clearing any existing content inside it just to make sure we are working with a clean slate. Next, we loop through the total number of slides and for each one we create a new div with the class name slide. This will serve as the container for each individual slide. Inside each slide, we create another div called slide image which will hold the image and then we append an actual image element inside it. The image source is dynamically set to a file path so it updates based on the slide number. After that, we create another div called slide copy for the text that will display the title and ID of the slide. This is where the data from our file comes into play. We access the title and ID from the array and insert it into the slide. Once we have built the slide structure, we add it to the slider container in the DOM. Now let's position each slide in 3D space. The Z position of each slide is calculated using the initial Z value plus a step of Z step pixels for every slide. This creates the feeling that each slide is positioned deeper into the tunnel as you scroll. For the X position, we alternate between 30% and 70% for a staggered look, which keeps things visual interesting as you scroll. We also set the opacity for each slide. This will be controlled by the animation later on. Finally, we use GSAP to apply these positioning and opacity values to each slide ensuring they are properly placed within the 3D space. Once the page has fully loaded, we call the generate slides function which dynamically creates and positions all of our slides. Now that we have generated the slides and positioned them in 3D space, the final step is to bring everything to life by animating both the tunnel and slides using GSAP and scroll trigger. We start by converting all the slide elements into an array using GSAP's utility function. This gives us an easy way to loop through and apply animations to each slide individually. Next, we define a helper function called getInitialTranslateZ. This function grabs the initial Z position of each slide so we know where they are starting from in the 3D space. We'll use this later to calculate how slides move as the user scrolls. Another helper function we use is map range. This function takes a value within one range and maps it to another range. We'll use it to smoothly control the opacity of the slides based on their Z position. Now comes the fun part, animating the tunnel based on scroll. We use scroll trigger to monitor the scroll position of the container element. We set the animation to start when the top of the container hits the top of the viewport and it will continue until the bottom of the container reaches the bottom of the viewport. The scrub is set to 1 which creates a smooth continuous animation that syncs with the user scrolling. Every time the scroll is updated, we set the scroll offset uniform value in the shader to match the scroll progress. This is what animates the tunnel in sync with the scroll. Next, for each slide, we get its initial Z position using the get initial translate Z function we defined earlier. Then we create another scroll trigger for each slide which again syncs the scroll of the container. As the user scrolls, we calculate the slide's new Z position by adding a Z increment based on the scroll progress. 
This moves the slides forward in the tunnel as you scroll. We also update the opacity of the slides based on their Z position. If a slide is close to the front, we fade it in by mapping its Z position to an opacity value between 0 and 1. If it's further away, we fade it out. This creates a nice depth effect, making the slides appear as though they are emerging from deep within the tunnel. Finally, we update the transform for each slide using Translate X, Translate Y and Translate Z to move them through the 3D space smoothly as the user scrolls. And that's it, with GSAP and Scroll Trigger, we have successfully created an interactive 3D tunnel with dynamic slides that respond to user scroll. Hope you found the video helpful, see you in the next one.